So this week we are looking at Black Widow, aka Natasha Romanoff. This is going to be Core Widow, uh, because there are two different uh, versions of Black Widow in the game. There's Black Widow and then Black Widow Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, so one thing that we're going to be looking at, uh, for the first time I'm actually going to kind of give you a rundown of the criteria that we kind of look at. Uh, so we're going to be looking at stats compared to their threat value, so how much stats you're getting based on what threat they are, uh, their overall kit, how they do in affiliation, and then their splash ability. So those are kind of the four things that we're looking at when we rank uh, these models S through F tier. Uh, so yeah, getting into it, we have, uh, again, Core Widow. So Natasha Ro Romanova, not Romanoff. No, it's Romanoff. Oh, is that yeah. how you pronounce that? No, it's it's just a misprint. Oh, are you trolling? Or is that real? No, they errated it. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, so, so it, oh, go, ahead. go, go over to like go past her injured card. Hey, I see. That's awesome. Look at Look that. that. CerebroMCP.com. Everyone. This, this is the quality that you get when you, uh, make an account with Cerebro. All right. Yeah. So, uh, looking at her stats. So real quick before we just full blown go into her stats, this will be the first two threat model that we've looked at in the game. And you guys can tell me if you think this is wrong, but I, I feel like two threats. So you, you'll have some three threat models, right? And they're really, really good. And they're so good that they could probably be like a four threat model. It's just uh, kind of the nature of the game. Some models just eke out better. There are some models that are four threat that probably should cost less because they're not that great. And you can kind of see the same things with maybe some even higher threat than that, fives or sixes. Um, but I feel like... Even though we don't necessarily, at, at least in a lot of the reviews that we've done, we don't necessarily compare the model to like another model. I feel like two threats all have like their niche role, and that you have to, you, you almost always have to have them in the roster. I think it's almost fair to compare them to the other two threats in the game, uh, like kind of pound for pound. What do you guys think about that? You think that's fair or no? I think it's hard ah. to compare two threats because 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 at the two threat level they have to have a niche. Yeah, they they so it's like comparing apples to oranges. I say okay. Black yeah. Widow, Black Widow is nothing like Nebula. Fair. Fair. Yeah, I, can't really compare them. I agree with that. Um, I also think it's kind of hard to compare two threat models. I also think there's a ceiling. On two threat models, uh, like I, I was thinking about this earlier today about like where I was gonna rank Black Widow. Um, I I don't know if a two threat model can be above an A. Um, I do, but I also in that same retrospect, I'm not sure that at least so far they've never printed one that's below like a C. So I think they have a lot lower of a ceiling, but also a lot higher of a floor than a lot of models. That's fair. I think that's a fair. Uh, yeah, like I just I don't think you can be like oh a two a two threat model is an S tier model. I just I, I, I they don't I don't think they're gonna ever print one that impacts the game to the point to hit that S tier, and I don't think they'll ever print one that's so bad that it's like literally unplayable. I think uh, at least that, they haven't yet. And I don't know what you guys think, but I think that the two threat models that they've made, I think I don't think that there's an uh, I guess a Koye maybe pre-change. But outside of that, I, in the current landscape of the MCP uh, scene, I don't think that there's one imbalanced or like bad two-threat model. What do you guys think? I think that all of them are pretty... I think that they've done a fantastic job with the balancing of two-threat models. I think the worst one's is a C+. Plus at like, like, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, like the worst two-threat model is probably Bob, right? And... I, I, there's nothing really bad about Bob. Like he can secure a point and he can possibly nuke a six threat model in one turn. What do you think, Brad? You, you think that they're all, you think all the two threats are, are pretty, pretty well balanced for, for what they do. Yeah. Uh, I think they are. I think Brandon's right. They're like C through a, cause Akoya got nerfed out of S. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, so, Let's uh, go ahead and give a rundown of Black Widow. So for her stat block, she's uh, four stamina on her healthy side. She's a lawn mover. 
Uh, size 2, 2 threat with a 3, 2, 4 uh, stat block going from physical to mystic. Uh, she has a 4 dice uh, energy strike that gives a standard power gain, but she has a wild widow sting after the attack is resolved, the target character loses 1 power. Uh, she has a range 3, 4 dice pistol attack that has no uh, special abilities to it. And then she has a 2 power cost 4 dice spender that uh, if the attack deals damage, after the attack is resolved, the target character gains stagger, uh, which... There are there no other staggers on two out uh, of two threat models. Is that correct? I don't believe any of the other ones uh, pack a stagger on any ability that they have. I don't think they do. Uh, and then that's a range two ability, and then it also has a wild elusive trigger. So after it's resolved, uh, the character may advance short. So a little tricky to get off the stagger because it's only a four dice uh, attack, but. There are ways to buff uh, attack dice volume in this game, so uh, there's some cheeky stuff that you can do with that. Uh, so then looking at the rest of her kit, uh, she has a cost 2 reactive superpower, which is Counter-Strike. Uh, if the character is within 3, you roll 4 dice, deal 1 damage for each crit and wild in the roll. We see this ability or similar versions of it on uh, some different characters. She has a passive martial artist, so when you're defending against physical or energy within two, you add blanks to your defense roll and your successes, and she has stealth, so you must be within three to target her with attacks. So, uh, and then on her flip side, nothing changes. Uh, everything's the same. So, uh, we'll start with uh, with her uh, stats for her threat value. So, what do you guys think about uh, her defensive line and her health pool. Eight, eight health on uh, healthy and injured side, comparatively speaking. Uh, we'll start with you, Brandon. Did we lose Brandon? Are you muted? You hear me? Oh, I think my now. Mic, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I think my mic went a little crazy. Um, I think I I really like Black Widow. This Black Widow a lot. She's actually. One of my favorite two-point models, mainly because of one thing sticks out on this card to me, uh, is that long move. Um, she gets that long move and a really good defense pull. Um, two-threat models usually have... She's the only two-threat model with a four-die defense, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I can't think of another one that has a four-die um, plus martial artists, plus stealth, um, and just the fact that you might may get a stagger. I yeah. mean, yeah, the, I, having, yeah. I, I feel like that's something. Like, I, I don't think that you see mixed technique a whole lot. I mean, I, I'm sure it gets busted out, but I, I think that's something that can kind of catch people off guard from time to time. It's just. It's something that I could see slipping people's mind, like, oh, she has a stagger attack. So, I forget about it when I play against her, and all the time. What's uh? I'll I'll, I'll uh, pitch it over to Brad really quick. Brad, will you do me a favor and check what what's the average health pull on a two threat model? Do you happen to know, or you can look for a second while I throw it over to Brad? Yeah, I'll check it out. What do you think about her stat block, Brad? Uh, just kind of looking at her defensive value and health pull and stuff. Um, I mean, two point long movers. All you really need to know. The four point mystic didn't used to matter, or the four die mystic didn't used to matter. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more mystic attacks now, so that's that's just great to have. But like, I mean, there are four things on this card that I love, and it didn't, and it wouldn't matter much what anything else said. What are those four things? Long move, counter strike, martial artist, stealth. Yep, yep. I mean, you're right. The martial artist. All that on a, all that on a two pointer. Like, that's great. It's really yeah. Good. yeah. I don't even ever look at her attacks. I, the amount of attacks every, yeah, I've made with her is it's very small. Like, I don't make very many attacks with her. Uh, a lot of the time, I mean, to to speak to both these guys' points, the long move is incredible on especially a two threat model um 
It gives her a lot of that flexibility. That can contest. That, yeah, that can contest. It gives her a lot of flexibility with what <laughs> you can do with her in a turn. Uh, she's great for picking up extracts and running away, again, because of the stealth. Yeah. The martial artist can kind of be a little wonky because you don't get as much value out of the uh, energy portion of it, the, the count likes, because you're not really rolling as many dice, but a lot of the energy attacks are probably longer than range three. I think a lot of the energy attacks in the game are... They're, are, they're usually a three or longer. There's not many within two. I think... Hers is. Hers is within two. Iron Fist's cheese strike is within two. But then when you There's do that, couple. You, you're, you're counting your blanks there. So she's not the sturdiest of models, but again, she's two threat. So I think that the defensive value that you're getting for her, just in her total kit and everything, uh, you get a lot. She, she's tankier than you would think for a two threat model. She's a she's just a really good objective piece. Yep. She is, she's very, very good. Um, in affiliation. I mean, she's great. So she has three really good affiliations uh, tied in with her. She's in A-Force, Avengers, and uh, now she's in S.H.I.E.L.D. Yep. So those are the three. All three, uh, well, at least A-Force and, I mean, definitely Avengers. Both those are very good affiliations. Uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. is more recent, uh, but they seem like they're probably a pretty decent affiliation. Uh, Grunts are really strong in the game. At least that's my take on it. I think that Brandon probably feels the same way. Have you played very much with the Grunts yet, Brad? Me? Yeah. I know you played no, against them. Have you I, played with them? Yeah, I've been playing some Shadowland Daredevil. Yeah. Do you think that they're they're pretty good? Uh yeah. Um I'm I'm going for a very killy list, so I getting a couple extra attacks in there is is money. I haven't actually got to play with them on an extract a real extract yet i got you we can reference that uh back almost what two months ago now i was quoted on saying that i think grunts are a bad idea and uh, i'm sticking by that i think they're busted <laughs> uh, every game you play with them it just feels great um i do have an update on our health pool for two point models all right let's hear it um there are nine two-point models, two of which have over eight health, and two of which have under eight health, and the rest have eight health. Okay, so she's looking right about your standard. It's, then. it's dead average. The two that have above it are Honey Badger and Nebula. They each have nine, uh, and they both cannot contest. Yep. Yep. And then the two under are Bob, Agent of Hydra, who just doesn't really die, yep. and then you have Rocket Raccoon. Okay, yep. Who also doesn't die. That's yeah, fair. he's he's hard, yeah. to, hard to deal yeah, with. Yeah, so it's like the ones under it. Yeah, like Bob just doesn't die, and then Rocket with always having cover doesn't take collisions. Has bought the personal bodyguard. Um, yeah, so they're they've been uh, the two point models are probably the most consistent they've been across the board. I think they've done a really, really good job with all of them. Okay, so she's looking at uh, your your pretty average stat line for a two threat. I think eight health is is good for a two threat model. Um, I was talking about affiliations. I, I think that any affiliation that you have access to a two threat in affiliated model just feels amazing. So if you're playing Shield, Avengers, or A Force, I mean, just having her. She to, uh, to Brad's point, she's just an excellent uh, scenario piece. She does very well, um, and I think that if any time that you take her in affiliation, she's just going to feel great, and she's probably, to be honest, going to make it into a decent portion of uh, your rosters kind of flesh out your point values for lists. I, I think that in affiliation, you probably reach for her maybe before some unaffiliated options. Uh, not always, but I think most of the time. What do you guys think about her just in, a, in affiliation? you think that she's very good? I think so, yeah. I think all three of her affiliations are going to have her in their roster as a two-point option. The only one that might not is A-Force, uh, because they do have a Koye at two as well. Fair. Yeah, that uh, is fair. But I, I, yeah, I think Avengers and S.H.I.E.L.D. are always going to probably have her. 
um, in most of their rosters. I, I can't really, I mean, Avengers especially, I don't, the only thing Avengers has is they have so many affiliated models that you can probably afford to take an unaffiliated to. I'm just not sure there's many that are better than her, and there's no reason to go outside that. Um, unless you're doing something specific. Yeah, yeah. unless you need something very, very specific. Um, A-Force is the only one I can think of that she's not like an auto-include, just because you Okoye is probably still an auto-include. Um, but I, I don't think... I don't think anyone's going to look at an A-Force roster with Black Widow and be like, oh, you're messing up. That's not yeah. the right call. Like, I think it's probably like, yeah, okay. You've got I a think plan. just and... take both. And you could. Especially if you're probably taking some... They've got some of the better higher threats models in their affiliation, so... All right, so those are good points. What, so the counter to that is, what do you guys think about her splashability value? You think that she makes it into a lot of rosters as an unaffiliated two-thread option? If you want a tech piece. If you want that objective person, the one that can either go sit there or grab an extract and try to get away. Like she has both of those roles very well. No matter what affiliation you are. I'm going to be for once. I might be the one that's a little bit more negative. I think that she is a really good uh, two threat option, but I think when you kind of compare to the other two threats, um, I, I think unaffiliated, it seems to me like people lean a little bit more if you're going for a control piece, or not control piece, a scenario piece, people are looking at Toad, uh, maybe as an unaffiliated two to kind of fill that slot versus Widow. Um, if you're looking That's for some, a fair point. If you're looking for something a little bit more defensible, I think that still people probably reach for a Koye uh, a little bit more uh, because she brings like a bodyguard and stuff like that. So if you're looking for somebody to sit on a point. Stealth and martial artist, I, I still think that just a Koye is maybe a little bit of a better option. And then if you're looking for something that's violence, I mean, Rocket Raccoon is really good, but I mean, I'm pretty high on Bullseye, which I think both of you probably like Bullseye pretty well too, correct? Well, if you want straight up violence, you go with Nebula. Or Nebula, but... <laughs> yeah, Nebula or, excuse me, yeah, Nebula, that's a great point. Nebula or Bullseye, yeah. I, 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 really like new bullseye so i'm not gonna argue against bullseye i like uh one thing with widow specifically i would like to just want like that long move though is so crucial um because she can go she can take the back like your opponent's front point uh and if they can't kill her that next turn she's gone and they're not catching her yep um uh, so if she can go so something I like to do, and she's in my criminal syndicate list because on Superpower Scoundrel, she can just go to the... I can take the opponent's front two points uh, with Black Widow and Lizard. I can just go sit on both of them from front point because Lizard's medium move, medium base, and then her small base long move can get me on those both points. So then you can take them, and then now you probably have five right off the gate before you even count extracts. Um which can get the game can get really out of hand. So I don't need her to really survive, especially if they're close. Like I just, you know, she's done her job. Um, the one thing is like, I, I think for the tech piece, uh, it's her toad. Um, and I do think you have to be playing an affiliation for toad that can give him power. Um, Cause he like, he can use the power. So if you're playing an affiliation that, you know, the leadership can kind of help power or even uh, Steve Avengers where you're lowering the cost um toad having you know finders keepers hop slippery uh that allows that was just, i think those are all two so then uh, they're all going to cost one uh, which is really good for him um, but again it's a medium move on a small base he can't get to all the places that natasha can so it's really going to depend on your roster i do think there are still a decent amount of rosters that want her um it's, I mean, if we were ranking all the twos, I think she's, you know, in the middle towards the top. I don't think she's at the top. I think I, she's... I think that she's probably more in the middle just because she... I mean, two two threats are some of the... Some of them are some of the most... Or the highest splash models in the game, right? Yeah. Like some of them. So I, I, I don't think... I think to your point, like, she can be a cheeky tech piece... 
if you're running uh, unaffiliated. But I don't think uh, for a majority of it that you're really reaching for as like an unaffiliated two threat option to go into a roster. So in affiliation, she's she's outstanding. I think that we're all kind of sitting in the same boat that she's not super splashable unless to Brandon's point you're kind of running her as a cheeky tech piece. Now there are some fun things you can do. I, I believe that we had a local uh, playing Avengers and he brought Baron Mordo in. So when you're getting six dice mixed techniques the chance of you doing one damage and staggering are actually pretty high, which uh, can be gross on uh, a two-threat model. So That sounds like Michael. Yep, uh, you are be correct. Uh, so uh, six dice, mixed techniques, really good. Get stagger out. Uh, I could see her being a two-threat splashed option in Black Order because uh, sometimes you, know, you have your core of uh, Thanos, Corvus Proxima. Uh, if you have an odd point value that you want to fill out, uh, so like if you're playing at like 18, you can take Black Widow, uh, Death's Decree, uh, Mixed Technique again, six dice, staggering, can help you prevent something that could kill potentially Thanos or Corvus, so uh, um, there's some cheeky stuff Or just how against them? Okay. Also, if you're play, if you just think that's a good play to play both of those, you can just play Black Cat for three points and pay two power and stagger them every time. Do double stagger, yeah. Yeah. So at range three, so. Yep. Uh, that'd be gross. Just make a what a stagger comp. <laughs> uh, stagger's good. It's yeah. Kids at home, if you want to make a stagger comp, just go search tags and cerebromcp.com for stagger. There you go. Uh, people would think we're sponsored by cerebromcp or something. Did uh, it's Black Cat Defenders? I can't remember. Yes. There you go. Nope. There, no? No. Nope. Oh, that's sad times. I was going to say, that, that could be your defender's she, roster brain. Just play she's strange. Midnight, she's Midnight Suns, Web Warriors, Syndicate, A-Force. Um, I will say, I think I do think Black Cat hurt Black Widow as far as roster construction goes. I think before Black Cat, Black Widow was a lot more commonly splashed. I think Black Cat kind of... It's hard to... That tech piece hey. is better off at three. Guys, you want to know what I just learned? What? Black Bolt, Black Cat, Black Dwarf, and Black Widow all have something to do with Stagger. Really? Wow. Yeah. That is Black actually interesting. What's his Black Bolt do? Is he immune or is he gives Stagger? He gives Stagger on Whisper. So all those models yeah. give stagger. That's actually really impressive. Now yeah. there we go. Trigger on his range three brutal. Oh, arm. okay. Yeah. Well, then we're gonna put this to the test, right? When they give us the rules for Black Swan. Uh, stags. Give me a stags. That's two Black Order members with stagger too. Yeah. Wow. Good catch. No idea. That's actually a really cool catch. Is it every single? Does every single model that starts with Black have a stagger? Is it well, all the of them? other? The no. other Black Widow doesn't. Okay. Black Panther doesn't. And Black Panther doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we're we're on to you, AMG. The other four that do though, there are only six. We're on to you. We know your schemes. That is a high thing. My, every time I've ever done brutal end with Black Dwarf, my opponents ask me if it's really range three. <laughs> 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 Every time it doesn't seem like you should have a rage three attack. Yeah, I mean it's good though. It feels I mean, good. Black Dwarf just catches people off guard because it's Black Dwarf because no one ever plays him. So they should. He's great. He is actually okay. He is good. If uh, you want to make a uh, stagger roster, it should be uh, a force. Okay. Do it. All right, well, uh, so kind of moving on now to our ranking of uh, Black Widow, uh, Natasha Romanoff. Oh, I will cover this really quick. Uh, so she does have a tactics card that is her and Clint Barton. Um, we don't necessarily cover all the tactics cards, but where both Hawkeye and Widow are in uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. together, this might see some play, especially if S.H.I.E.L.D. is like an affiliation you're looking at. So it's uh, Professionals, which is unaffiliated. Just requires you have Natasha Romanoff, so either Core Widow or uh, Widow 2. 
Uh, and Clint Barton may spend two power each to play this card. If Clint damages a character with an attack and Natasha is within two of the damage character, you may move one asset or civilian token from the damage character to Natasha. She's not holding it and it does not allow her to hold more tokens than the crisis specifies. So there's a lot of actually like real cheeky cards that S.H.I.E.L.D. has that comes in Fury's box as far as... Um, different stuff that you can do with like uh especially with grunts just like interacting with uh assets and civilians and stuff like that so uh what do you guys think about this you, you guys think it'll see some play in shield i mean i don't think it's gonna see play anywhere else but in shield it might there's a cheeky i mean if you're playing deadly legacy viruses uh if you can get one with her one with clint and then with the grunts being able to pick it up also pass it like where you get to place it, mm -hmm. you could really kind of set yourself up with a play where she may be able to pick all three. And if there's a model on your list that you want to take that, take all three of those and skedaddle and give you eight points, your two threat model is that one, especially one that has stealth. Yep. But even then, I think they have too many cards that it might be hard to fit that in. But that's a cheeky That's play. what I was thinking. Yeah. But if you've got a plan and say everyone in your meta plays Deadly Legacy Viruses, it may be worth it. It's not. This isn't a bad card. the The power cost is is a little. It's a little high, but. I, I mean, think the I, I think the biggest drawback is the within two of the damage character. I, I I wish that would said within two of Clint Barton, uh, because that means she's near a character, and if you're not dazing her now. She's, she's not near the here. character. How did she get the asset token? Well, if Clint has it. No, it's not. If oh, Clint from the damage it. character. Oh, oh, I definitely. Oh, I like that way more. No, I like that a lot. I'm. Yeah, I think you can make that play. That the makes problem, the deadly legacy viruses way better. The problem with this card, and let me get where I can make sure. Uh, yeah, because Clint. Yeah, can be you have to pay fire, for right? this card. Before you make the attack, yeah, because it says if he makes e damages. I mean, it's not the craziest thing in the world because and it gives you two shots. He, he has Probably. if he's yeah, because well, he can hook arrow right. There's nowhere that Hawkeye really can't reach, and he's always so high on power that. Well, I guess you'd have to still pay the two though. I don't know. He Hawkeye for me is always usually sitting on a ton of power, so. Uh, being able for him to pick between energy and physical is probably why this card is feasible. And you have two shots at it. You're probably getting at least one damage there. I just know yeah. it's not being played right now because of that. Yeah, but uh, again, I don't think this is going to get played unless you're playing shield. I think it's the two power off of Widow that's going to be the problem. Yeah, he's always going to have it. Her having two power isn't always a thing. Like she would have to there. be, yeah, not picking up anything else or interacting. But uh, yeah, so this isn't a terrible card. Um, I just again I wanted to kind of cover it just because it might see play uh, in Shield affiliation because both these are affiliated. And you know what's even better if um. Clint damages the character and it's Agent of Shield Widow and she steals it and Clint dazes the character and then and she then can do she her can interrogation. And do the interrogation. Yeah, that's a two point swing or more, depending on the uh the asset. So Yeah. That's Christmas land though. Alright, she would have to have five power to pull that off. So uh, looking back at Widow, uh, where are we placing her on the S through F scale? Uh, go ahead, Brad. We'll start with you this time. B plus. Okay. Um, very solid model that, um, as you said, gets kind of overshadowed by Toad out of affiliation. But just like if you're taking her, uh, she's gonna. She's going to sit there or she's going to take an extract and you're going to be happy with what she did. Yeah. Um, I like her kit. Uh, I don't use the counter strike too much. I, I played her quite a bit. Actually, I hardly ever make any attacks with her. Um, yeah. 
but she's good for what she does. She's fast. She gets extracts and she runs away. She can move from one end of the board to the other, uh, flipping secures for you. If it's like Mutant Mad Men or something, she gets around and she flips stuff. Uh, so I'm pretty high on her. I think I'm going to echo what Brad said. I'm going to give her a B plus. She's just a really solid two threat. Uh, the splash ability, she doesn't really get splashed, which probably keeps her out of A tier for me. But uh, definitely a, a high B plus. What do you think, Brandon? Uh, I got her a solid B. Okay. All right, so... And that averages, by the way, to an E. No, it yeah. doesn't. I came into this, I was like the highest. On, I'm like, I feel like I've defended her this entire podcast, and now I'm giving her the lowest grade. I don't know how I feel about that. It's just a B plus to a B. It's, it's still a B, so it's fine. All right, uh, well... Uh, if you're wanting to play uh, Widow, um, just a recommendation of what you can play her in. Uh, she's, again, very uh, good in her affiliations. A-Force, maybe not as much, to kind of Brandon's point earlier. I think that she's excellent in S.H.I.E.L.D. I think that she's very, very good in Avengers. Um, and for a like kind of building spot for... Uh, recommendation to play her in i would recommend if you have the sam wilson box i've played a lot of sam wilson avengers and he specifically wants to go pretty wide uh, with his character selection so i would start somewhere with like sam widow maybe throw in luke cage and iron fist in there because that'll get you two characters from the same box uh i would even throw in maybe war machine because that comes in the sam wilson box and that should give you uh, that gives you about 14 points, so you can play Sword Base, which is the lowest threat uh, crises in the game. So that'll give you five characters at 14, uh, and then from there you can kind of build out the rest of your roster. You can do all sorts of stuff, like put in Steve Rogers. If you want to continue the Avengers train, you can do what I like to do, which is put Hulkbuster in my roster. So uh, you can put some maybe beefier characters in there, or... If you are got the core set and you're just picking up a couple boxes, you can throw in a lot of the characters uh, from the core set and put them in there and you'll be just fine. So uh, Sam Wilson Avengers, probably play something like Sword Base, uh, maybe a little bit wider uh, Secures or Extracts, something maybe like Spider Infected, uh, and that'll be a good place for you to start playing with Widow. Uh, does anybody else have any kind of roster starters for Widow? player in criminal syndicate you got about 10 boxes from my list though so it's not as cost effective as jared's list uh yeah play the five point secure play black widow it's really good yep super powered scoundrels double move her double all move her at the end of round one and take the back scoundrel point plus what three in the middle now you can take all five right you can take all five yeah you yep. play lizard you take the left the or their front point, you, Black Widow takes their other front point, and then everyone else takes the your two fronts in the middle. Yep. Or you could not do that. No, it's a good play to do it. All right. Well, uh, the Crit Hit Wild is giving her a B overall. So very solid two threat, guys. She comes in the core set. Core set's one of the best deals that you can get in miniature gaming, <laughs> like in general, <laughs> across like all the games. It's just an outstanding value, so... If you don't own it, I recommend that you get it. You get a ton of stuff. You could buy that and then never buy anything else for the rest of the game, and you could still always play this wonderful game. So I recommend it highly. Uh, then moving on to the last segment, uh, we're going to talk about some comic book recommendations. And for this, I'm going to hand it over to Brad. So what do you have for us this week? Uh, let me. I was on three row updates. Um... Okay. So the. Um... I had to like, there were more things that I could talk about here, but I kind of narrowed it down uh, because I have another Black Widow I need to talk about and other characters. But um, I got three recommendations here. The first is Uncanny X Men 268. I'm going to recommend X Men comics as often as I can. This is Chris Claremont and Jim Lee. Um, so in the 1940s, Captain America and Logan um, have to protect a Russian girl from Nazis. You could probably guess who that was. 
And then in the present day, Black Widow investigates in the same area and gets into trouble and Wolverine and Jubilee and Psylocke come to her rescue. Um, it's just a one shot issue. You don't really need to know what else is going on in X Men for it. And um, it's one of the most iconic Black Widow, Captain America, and Wolverine stories. Okay. Like it's got all of them together, and um, it's pretty famous. Uh, these other two. Um, I was going to say I haven't read them, but that's not true for one of them. So the next one I have not read, um, it's Black Widow Widowmaker by Jim McCann and David Lopez. Um, what a, what a title. What Black Widow Widowmaker? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm recommending this because from what I could find, um, it is. It ties in. It doesn't directly tie into the MCU, but people who are fans of the MCU will find some things that seem familiar because it's um, it's Natasha and Clint Barton uh, teaming up, and they're teaming up to hunt down an assassin that's going by the alias Ronan, which Clint used to go by. So um, there's a lot of little things that the MCU is doing that it also kind of shows up in this comic. So, All right, cool. Uh, and then the last one. Um, oh, there's more. Look at you. You've really yeah, got it all out this week. I, I missed three. that part. I means he had to find six because he's got another Black Widow to prepare for. There were things I had written down that I'm like, no, this will fit better. For Black Widow, Agent of Shield, I like it. He's doubly prepared. Oh my god! This is the research you get on this channel. You don't get <laughs> yeah. that anywhere. This else. is the quality that you get when you listen to the Crit Hit Wild podcast. So, the, the last one is Black Widow: The Finely Woven Thread. Um, it's by Nathan Edmondson and Phil Noto, and this one is worth recommending just for the art. Uh, Phil Noto is one of the best artists in the game right now. Uh, the art is beautiful in this comic. And it's just a series of one-shot stories. Um, and they kind of hint at and like... Um, not really explore, but they kind of bring together... Because she's been in the comics for what like 50 years or something like that this kind of brings together all the different versions of her that have shown up in the comics over the years and kind of makes them one person and makes sense um and i cannot stress enough at how pretty the art is okay cool maybe uh in the next cast i can try to find some screenshots of the art we can share it Well, I believe all these are probably on Marvel Unlimited, correct? Yes, they are. Uh, we are not sponsored by Marvel Unlimited, but it's just a good... What's the going rate now? Uh, uh, forget on there. You, you can get a yearly subscription for $60. I don't know if that's the all-the-time rate or if that's the special rate they offer, like, a bunch. Yeah. Um, they, I, I know right now they're offering 50% off your first month if you want to pay monthly, but it's absolutely worth it. There are thousands and thousands of comics on there. So unless you can't read, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah, do they, have, do they have any picture-only comics on there for people like me uh, that can't read? They do. There um, we go. I'm subscribed. So there was this one <laughs> month in the early 2000s uh, where they did this gimmick called Nuff Said, and all the comics that came out that month have no words in them. <laughs> all right. right my, my alley, yeah, that, that's, yeah, I don't have to read words. You, um, if comics are done well, you don't have to read words to understand most of what's going on. If you've ever played Magic with you, me, you'd understand that sometimes cards just have a lot of text and I just move them to a different pile. 
I ain't reading that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I was. That's why I would, I would have been so high on Doc Ock. He has like no text on his card. Yeah, I remember whenever you busted out Doctor Voodoo's card. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Everything about Voodoo, there is so much text on that card. There is so much text on his tactics cards. Like they yeah. gave you no favors with that one. They're just like, yeah, dude, you have to read to play this card. Um, and and they didn't even read it because if they would have read it, they would have been like, this thing's busted. <laughs> while while we're sitting here BSing, I'm just looking through all this Phil Noto, uh, Black Widow art. There is so much text on Dr. Voodoo. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Well, that, God, God damn it. That wraps us up for this week, guys. Um, uh, next week, uh, we're going to be looking at the, I think that next week we'll wrap Last. up. Yeah, next week we'll wrap up our uh, core set characters as we kind of work our way through the wow. game. Maybe, unless they reveal... Uh, yeah some newer characters and we'll be taking a look at those instead so uh but thanks for tuning in if you're still sticking around listening to us bullshit um we appreciate it uh thank you for all the views that we get on youtube thank you for all the listens that we get on all the podcasts feel free to share uh if you haven't already and again like and subscribe to the channel and if you guys have any questions or have anything about cerebro that you want to talk about or anything that you want us to cover Again, feel free to comment and uh, or email us at crithitwild at gmail.com. But until next week, have a great week, guys, and we'll talk to you later. Have good gaming, guys. Have good games.